So just a couple of... Uh, yeah, is that better? Good, thank you. Anybody else? Questions? Hi. Paul, what's up? Yeah, good morning. Todd. Good morning, Paul. We live in the same neighborhood. I yeah, I actually brought two of my neighbors. We got Paul and we have Eunice. <laughs> Eunice and I met at the park, and I was like, oh, you're, you're interested in teaching? And you, you, great, come to the web programming. It was awesome. But to that end, the teaching, it's a week long course, at least this one is. Yeah. What is the ultimate goal that sure. you guys would love to see us walk away with? Yeah. At the end of this week, so yeah. that we can target our learning and stuff towards yeah. your goal. Yeah. I'm sure, sure. You might be getting to that, but sure. I that's sure. my question. Um, so that's a great question. And whenever anybody asks me uh, about uh, programming and what's it take to be a programmer and how to become a programmer, uh, I like the analogy of music. And uh, I, a couple years ago, started learning to play the guitar. And it, it was hard. Playing the guitar is hard. Like, you know, at first I uh, would learn left hand and chords, right? And so, okay, let me do the C chord and like get my fingers just right on the neck of the guitar and on the strings. Okay, now I got to write strum, right? And now, oh, now I got to do a D chord. Okay, D was these two and that one, strum. And then once I kind of got the right hand technique a little bit quicker, okay, now that strum doesn't have any life in it. It doesn't have the right tone, the right rhythm, the right tempo, right? I need to, I need to learn all that. Let me work on right hand technique. And then get the left hand and the right hand working together. And now after, you know, a year or two years of laborious, sometimes painful, often very bad sounding, you know, guitar playing, it's like, wow, now I can start to play music. And I could start to jam a little bit. And I don't have to really think about it, but I could just have a vision of what I want to express. And, and that could come out, you know? And so it's the same way with coding. At, at first, it's laborious, and you're just learning chords. And I'm sure some of you have already experienced that going through Code Academy and, and also through Shea Howe's book, you know, his online resource. Uh, and, but once you learn these chords and once you learn the technique, and some of the different patterns for doing things, then you could start to make music. You could start to create something. You could make something beautiful. And so the, the main thing I want you to take away from this training is just more familiarity with programming. That's it. It's all time on task. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. And you know, it's like Malcolm Gladwell says when he wrote that book, Outliers, where he studied people who are really successful. And he said, what makes somebody successful? And uh, two, one thing became apparent to Malcolm, but later it's been modified. So there's two things that make somebody successful, or make somebody an expert, or make somebody an outlier. The first thing is 10,000 hours. That's what Malcolm came up with. You need to put in 10,000 hours. That's four hours a day, every day for 10 years, right? And so uh, in 10 years, you guys will be rock star coders if you do this, you know, four hours a day. And make it your job. Well, that's what we compete with. We're, we're, create, we're educating students to go out into the workforce, and they're interviewing with people who do it eight hours a day every day, right, who are experts. But then, you know, we're giving them the foundation to go out there and get those jobs so that they could start gaining that expertise. So this time on task is the first thing to being successful. Just to re finish this thought, the second thing is having good teaching resources, both individuals, teachers, and, and, and materials. Uh, and so, you know, you could spend 10,000 hours doing something, but if you have crappy teachers or crappy teaching resources, you won't become an expert. That's the other thing that was modified with Malcolm Gladwell's outlier stuff. And so the main thing about this boot camp is let's all spend some time talking about code. And so even though there's going to be a teacher up on the stage, we are all teachers. You guys are teachers too. Every single person out there is a teacher. And we're also all students. So we all have things to learn from each other. Right? And I, I uh, really encourage co-teaching, cross-teaching. And so that could be that when the person up here is talking and presenting, you're like, oh, you should totally check this out. Man, shout it out. Raise up your hand. You know? Or ask a question. Or when we're in the lab and you're working side by side, work with each other. If you're stuck, say, man, well, why is my stuff not working? Ask the people around you. And, uh, and so that's, that's the main intent, is just to spend some time learning to code. You've already done, you're le learning more about coding, you've already done, you know, some groundwork with the H Code Academy and the Shea House stuff, but the rest of it is, uh, is um, 
you know, just time on task. So that's the main thing. Let's just get together and spend more time together. And then just naturally you're going to, uh, you know, I, I like to think about learning kind of like my dogs. The more you want something to stick to you, the more you need to roll around in it. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> right? Good. You know, seriously. So the more we roll around in it, the more we just hang out and have a good time and, and just spend each day learning, learning stuff, you, you'll, you'll be like, Holy cow, I didn't even know that. That's so awesome, right? And each day you'll learn with a little something, leave with a little something. And after 10, we 10 weeks together, if you're going the whole path with us, which I really encourage you to do, because this is an unprecedented opportunity. In the private marketplace, you'd pay three to $5,000 a week for something like this. And that's 50, 000, thirty dollars to $50,000 of value that you are getting for free from really outstanding trainers, like really great people. And uh, so it's an unprecedented opportunity. At the end of 10 weeks, you're going to know so much more than you know right now. And, uh, and sometimes it could be overwhelming. It could be daunting. It could be like, I, can, you know, like, I can't learn this stuff. This is crazy. You know, but like, after a while, your fingers just fly. And you don't even know how that process happened. You just spent time with it. And you're like, la, 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 or whatever, right? But you're doing it with code. Um, so just a couple of inspirational quotes that I really like. Uh, Henry Ford has this quote, which I think is fantastic. Uh, Whether or not you think you can or think you can't, you are right. Whether or not you think you can or think you can't, you are right. And, uh, and the Buddha said, mind is the forerunner of all things. As you think and act, so your world becomes. And, uh, and then also one other teacher I had in my life, this would say, drop by drop, the bucket gets filled. Drop by drop, the bucket gets filled. So you might look in that bucket and you might be like, oh my god, I put in so much time and there's like hardly anything in this bucket of knowledge I'm trying to acquire. It's like been eight weeks, I've only got this much water in the bottom. But drop by drop, the bucket gets filled. You just keep adding those drops and after two, three years, you'll be great. All you got to do is spend time with it. You just got to roll around in it, that's it. Yeah. 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 Some of us are not able to attend all of the Sure. Sure. Is there any discussion of a follow up where you might be able to pick up the ones that you Absolutely. So we're recording all of the sessions except for, and really this, this program is for the good of all beings. The good of all beings, right? And, uh, and uh, my philosophy is that all suffering comes from ignorance. And if you're suffering, it's because you're ignorant. And so as we eradicate ignorance from the world, we're eradicating suffering. You know, when I see somebody acting unskillfully, I just think, oh, you know, they're uninformed. I try to remember that at least, right? Sometimes I think, ah, no, screw. Okay, there's uninformed, right? But, you know, uh, as we eradicate ignorance from ourselves, from the world, we make the world a better place. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about, actually. What your question was. Is it going to be online? These are going to be online. Yeah, so it's for the benefit of all. That's what this training's about. It's for the benefit of all. And uh, ed we educate ourselves first, and then we educate others. And that helps everybody, right? And um, so we're putting this online, and, and uh, that's going to be available for the whole world for free in various locations. Uh, YouTube, and then Ryan and I were talking about. Ryan is part of a startup in New York with 10 guys who have an online learning platform. We're talking about putting it on that for free. And um, so uh, it'll be out there free, except for JavaScript, because uh, Ray Villalobos has a contract with Lynda.com, and uh, Lynda says you can't put out resources that compete with what we're selling. And so with, uh, with uh, the JavaScript, everything we're going through is detailed on uh, the Summer Web Boot Camp. So here on the schedule, and I'm not sure how deep you dug into the website. I know that the way most of us surf the web. Wow, your, your internet is way slow. This one, I don't know what's up with that. The way most of us surf the web is, uh, or me at least, glance, glance, glance. But on the schedule, if that ever comes up, um, under JavaScript, there are links to all the lynda.com trainings that we're going to be parallel training. And so you can, you can check those out on lynda.com. And if uh, lynda.com is 30 bucks a month, but and, and I hope Linda doesn't watch this. If, if you get a Fresno City, Fresno City Library membership, you get access for free. <laughs>
Fresno County Library. <laughs> so just go Fresno County Library, Linda, and you'll be able to get access to lynda.com for free. Uh, and, uh, and then, but I guess they, Fresno's paying them for that or something. But, so then you can watch all the JavaScript there. Then you need a library collaborator. And thank you to Bob. See, I learned that from Bob. You know, we all learn from each other. Yo, what's up? No, Madeira's an awful place. They don't do anything. I have no idea about Madeira. Sign, sign, up for, sign, up, sign up for the Fresno County Library and you'll be good. Any other questions or thoughts? So uh, just a few uh, task, you know, just a few procedural items. Uh, we have bathrooms down this hallway. Uh, parking's out here, but you're going to need a parking pass tomorrow. I've sent all those out to you via email. You need to color print it. Uh, and uh, if that's a problem for you, we have about eight left up here, which thank you very much, Paul. We have about eight left up here. So first come, first serve, uh, you know, whenever you want to get up, there you go. But you'll need them starting tomorrow. And it's probably a good idea to stick it in there today. I can't help you if you get a parking ticket. You've been forewarned. Um, you see the Wi-Fi access up there. And... Uh, Another thing that uh, I'm going to be sending to everybody is a, a link at some point, a link for training resources. So one of the things is I just want to give you resources so that you can learn. And uh, I put together a page with just a lot of really great resources on it. So uh, we'll get you that. Some people have asked me, hey, what about gym access? Is Zach here? All right, Zach, you made it. Glad to see you. Uh, you know, just like go to the tower after dark and, and you know, take $80 out of the ATM, you'll get plenty of exercise. <laughs> People chase you, you have to fight, it'll be awesome. No, I'm kidding. Um, and the, yeah, it's some of both. But no, no gym access uh, on camp. I don't know what the hours are. It's right over here. You can go see if you can get in. Just say, hey, I'm doing a thing. It's right over there. I don't know if it'll be open or not open, but feel free to check it out. There is a George Brown's in town and a couple other gyms, so you could check those out, call them. Uh, I just want to mention briefly the dress code. So if you show up, <laughs> well, you know, we're school. Uh, so if, if you show up and, uh, you know, it's summer, so you could dress however you like, casual. And if you show up dressed nice, that's fine, you could do that, but we, we will question you. Um, <laughs> why do you dress so nice? Uh, and, uh, and then we also need to, we need to sign in every day. So at this back lectern, we'll have a sign-in sheet. So just make sure every day you just initial next to your name. Dennis, do you have that out yet? I don't see it there. I don't know where it went. So maybe it's getting passed around. Whoever has it, if you could put it back, that'd be great. And uh, so sign-in sheet. And then we're, we're editing these videos so that we can put them out there. And we're going to need some volunteers to help us out with that. And it's basically you just wa you're watching everything from up here, and you know you can see it here. But you have like four different screenshots, kind of like you know you're the editor, and you say, oh, I'm going to show the the person's screen now. Oh, I'm going to show them standing and talking on the stage now. And so we'll need some some help with that. And it's just pushing four buttons and choosing which shot you want. But you do need to be focused in and make sure that you're not so. Oh, that's awesome! Dang, I've, I've, I've been showing the audience, and there's been all this great stuff happening on the screen. I forgot to switch to showing the screens. You gotta, you gotta be tuned into that. So, uh, you know, the last thing I, I wanna share, since it is Memorial Day, I just wanna take a moment to sort of acknowledge that and, uh, and yeah. Uh, evaluation. Uh, more, yes. Evaluation. Uh, at the end of the week. There'll be an eval. You can fill it out now and turn it in if you want, because basically what you need to say was, this was an amazing opportunity. I can't believe it. You should do this every year. Double the funding. Speaking to that point, what is, what is the chance that this will be repeated next year or on a continuum basis? I mean, oh, yeah. You know, how important is this feedback for them? Oh, it's very important. This format
guaranteed that we'll have the funding for this next year. But if we do and we have this on the books, we'll certainly do for next year. So the feedback is important. Is that very important? Why is his so slow, man? Okay. All right, so uh, last thing I, uh, I'll share with y'all since it's Memorial Day. And, uh, you know, we all know war sucks, but we continually fight. I don't understand what that is, right? We fight with others at a very mild level every day, whether it's that guy in traffic or, you know, just uh, stress fighting with ourselves. But uh, this is, you know, war sucks, and this is one of my favorite war stories. And so I thought I'd read just the first two uh, paragraphs to you from the New Yorker. It's called Battle Lessons, and it's about, do you know this? It's about uh, Lieutenant uh, Colonel Chris Hughes. And so this is a story that I heard one time, or read in the New Yorker, and, uh, and I, I really like it. So I thought I'd just share it. Uh, since it's Memorial Day, that's as good of an excuse as any. During the early weeks of the Iraq war, the television set in my office was tuned all day to CNN with the sound muted. On the morning of April 3rd, as the Army and the Marines were closing in on Baghdad, hold on, I'll help you out here. I happened to look up at what appeared to be a disaster in the making. A small unit of American soldiers was walking along a street in Najaf when hundreds of Iraqis poured out of the buildings on either side. First waving, throats taut, they pressed in, fists waving, throats taut, they pressed in on the Americans who glanced at one another in terror. I reached for the remote and turned up the sound. The Iraqis were shrieking, frantic with rage. From the way the lens was lurching, the cameraman seemed as frightened as the soldiers. This is it, I thought. A shot will come from somewhere. The Americans will open fire, and the world will witness the My Lai Massacre of the Iraq War. At that moment, an American officer stepped through the crowd, holding his rifle high over his head, with the barrel pointed to the ground. Against the backdrop of the seething crowd, it was a striking gesture, almost biblical. Take a knee, the officer said, impassive behind surfer sunglasses. <clears throat> The soldiers looked at him as if he were, he were crazy. Then, one after another, swaying in their bulky body armor and gear, they knelt before the boiling crowd and pointed their guns at the ground. The Iraqis fell silent, and their anger subsided. The officer ordered his men to withdraw. It took two months to track down Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel he, Chris Hughes, who by, that, by then had been rotated home. He called from his father's house in Red Oak, Iowa, en route to study at the Army War College in Pennsylvania. I wanted to know who had taught him to tame a crowd by pointing his rifle muzzle down and having his men kneel. This almost makes me cry, man. Were those gestures peculiar to Iraq, to Islam? My questions barely made sense to Hughes. In an unassuming, persistent Iowa tone, he assured me that nobody had prepared him for an angry crowd in an Arab country, much less the tribal complexities of Najaf. Army officers learn in a general way to use a helicopter's rotator and wash to drive away a crowd, he explained, or they fire warning shots. Problem with that is the next thing you have to do is shoot them in the chest. Hughes had been trying that day to get in touch with Grand Ator Ali al-Sistani, a delicate task that the Army considered politically crucial. American gunfire would have made it impossible. The Iraqis already felt that the Americans were disrespecting their mosque. The obvious solution to Hughes was a gesture of respect. And yeah, you could read the rest of that on your own, but uh, I just think that that is a, I don't know, it's really, I think that's awesome. So it would be Memorial Day, I was thinking, what can I share? And then I remembered this article that I read a while back, and I thought, yeah, that's a, that's a nice thing. But the entire uh, idea of meeting conflict with peace, trying to do good in the world, keeping your, your eyes on a task, what's the most effective way to get the task done, and, uh, and showing respect to, to each other, to everybody. thought there's a lot of good lessons in that. All right, so I'm glad you guys are here. Uh, and I'm looking forward to spending time coding with you. And that's enough talking from me. Let's get busy doing what we're here to do. Thanks for coming. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Well, he, I'll introduce him when he's ready to talk. And then you can get him to talk. <laughs>